And I'd like to ask Mr. C.M. Mack to come up and make his remarks. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I got five minutes, so this is the only slide I got here. <laughs> no. uh, CLP Power, uh, supporting the government's initiative, has been set the scene. Uh, we are uh, very much look forward to a clean city, and uh, it's in our energy vision that uh, we promote uh, the use of elect electric vehicles as a uh, a strategy as well as a, a, a target. It makes sense to the utility. And uh, today's topic is uh, more on the technical solution as well as the ownership issue. And uh, I'm now targeting only on the private uh, uh, EVs, uh, not so much on the public bus, uh, buses, light bus, which will be another issue uh, not covered today. Now for private EVs, technically, uh, like uh, other electrical installations, uh, the EV charging infrastructure must be safe, reliable, and efficient to the users. And as uh, Vivian just now said, uh, the EV infrastructure, charging infrastructure, must be well in place before uh, EV can be widely adopted. So we must have the EV infrastructure before the EVs to come. Um, now, depending on the usage, uh, the design and the establishment of the EV infrastructures uh, can adopt a different approach uh, for, uh, to achieve the, the optimum solution. Now, say for uh, charging at home overnight or at, uh, charging in the office when you are, uh, can afford uh, eight to 10 hours charging time, then maybe a lower current standard charge charging, or we, what we say base charging, uh, 13M or even lower, can, can suffice, can provide the, the solution. Uh, of course, we still need uh, the charging uh, sockets to be controlled by uh, LCD, dedicated circuit uh, with on-off switch to ensure safety. But for opportunity charging at uh, public car parks, or in a shopping mall, um, and when normally you can have uh, one or two hours time, or, or maybe uh, just a little less than an hour's time, then the semi-fast charging, we think, uh, could also be considered, which means the uh, 32M single-phase charging, uh, which will push uh, some, some t something like three times uh, more power into the electric vehicles than the base charge will make the, a lot more sense uh, in public car parks. Of course, if we are going to adopt this uh, approach, then the, uh, the park and socket and, uh, and the infrastructure will have to be uh, uh, to match it. And then, uh, as uh, we all are aware, the, the fast charge, higher, the, the quick charge with higher power from 20 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt uh, will also be required at uh, strategic locations in, in the territories uh, to provide emergency charging or for you know, uh, ease of mind sort of um, uh, as purpose. Uh, whether we use this uh, a standard plus a fast or standard plus semi-fast with strategic locations uh, with quick charge, I think it still need to be experienced and we need to study in collaboration with, uh, with all, all others. But I think this uh, down the road, uh, we, we must have our concept clear with a clear objective to, to achieve it. And uh, further to this, there are also integrated solutions with uh, safety charging and consolidated billing to uh, provide uh, uh, convenience to, to users can also be considered. And uh, all this, will come, come down to a standard compa uh, uh, compliance. Uh, as what the, the previous section's uh, speakers had uh, mentioned, uh, we really need to have a uh, standard uh, for, for EV charging to avoid rework, to, uh, to ensure safety, to ensure uh, long-term compatibility. Now, so much so on the technical side, uh, the, others, the other 
questions on ownership and who builds and, and so on. I think uh, our permanent secretary is uh, well said for new buildings, of course, the property developer in the design already uh, built in this uh, in, uh, EV infrastructure will be an excellent approach because that will be much cheaper, much cost effective, and uh, the power company can just install a meter or, or whatever. So this, for, for new buildings, I think this shouldn't be too difficult. But the issue for uh, existing building, I think, uh, uh, as uh, Vivian already said, there are ownership, liability, uh, strata, title, all sorts of difficulties. But I think this can still need to be tackled by the, uh, by the uh, stakeholders with concerted effort. Uh, we are thinking of maybe in this uh, private, existing public car parks, they are visiting uh, car parks and we can install uh, at these visiting car parks something like the public car park facilities to allow some charging uh, of EVs there. And uh, of course the uh, property owners and the uh, car park uh, manager, they can also install uh, on, on their own. Uh, of course, compiling to the uh, standards. And uh, utility can also have a role to play if we are asked to do it. We are, we are willing to get it done. And, uh, but then we, we think this is a, uh, it's a possibility in the sense that we can uh, merge it into, uh, into our supply network as a natural extension of the supply network so that the cost, the investment, can be amortized and depreciation over long term so that the cost can, can, can be uh, 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 lower and, and this could be a uh, feasible solution. So that, that actually ends my <laughs> presentation with one more minute. Uh, so it's back to the, our uh, vision that uh, CLP, uh, we are uh, favoring this uh, uh, zero emission clean vehicles, clean energy, so that we can have a clean air, blue sky, and better life uh, together with the peripheral delta uh, in conjunction with uh, our counterparts so that uh, we, we, we have a better future. Thank, thank you.